Okay, we're still talking about adding and subtracting radicals, and we're going to continue to work through some examples of combining radical expressions by adding or subtracting. And we see that, that this is a lot like uh, adding or subtracting like terms. The first example here is very easy. 3 times the square root of 7 plus 8 times the square root of 7. Well, just think 3 of these plus 8 of these will give me 11 of these. So my answer is 11 times the square root of 7. And that's it. Pretty easy. Just combine them because they're both square root of 7s. So they just combine by adding the 3 and the 8. This next one, 10 times the square root of 80 minus 5 times the square root of 5. Okay, I'm going to deal with this by simplifying this square root of 80. I have 10 times but instead of the square root of 80, I'm going to factor the 80. Now, I could factor it as 8 times, 8 times 10, but that doesn't help because 8 and 10, neither of those numbers are perfect squares. But 80 is also 16 times 5, and that helps because the 16 can come out from under the radical. Then I still have this minus 5 root 5. And then you see what happens to the 16. It gets square rooted and pops out here as a 4 and that's 4 times 10 out front. So I end up with 40 times the square root of 5 minus 5 times the square root of 5. And you should see that oh, that should be a 40 right there. Let me fix that. Okay, you should see that, that 40 of these minus 5 of these is 35 of these. So 35 root 5 is the answer. And then the next one, negative 4 times the square root of 12 minus 3 times the square root of 3. Now I'll solve this by simplifying the square root of 12. So let's just rewrite this whole problem, but instead of the 12 under the radical, I'll write 4 times 3. Everything else is the same. And we see this 4 comes out here as a 2, and that's 2 times negative 4 right there out front. So this becomes negative 8 times the square root of 3 minus 3 times the square root of 3. And those are both square root of 3 terms. Negative 8 of these minus 3 of these is just going to be negative 8 minus 3 times the square root of 3. And that's negative 11 times the square root of 3. In this next one, we have 2 times the square root of 48x plus 3 times the square root of 75x. Well, I'm going to take these two numbers, the 48 and the 75, and I'm going to factor each one, and I'm going to look for perfect square factors as I do it. So this first term, I can rewrite as 2 times the square root of 16 times 3x, because 16 times 3 is 48. Then the second term, I can write that as 3 times the square root of 25 times 3x, because 25 times 3 is 75. And now we can see what happens here. The 16 is going to pop out there as a 4, so that's a 4 times a 2 right there. And over here, the 25 is going to pop out front as a 5. It's going to get square rooted, and that's a 5 times a 3 right there. So this becomes 8 times the square root of 3x plus 15 times the square root of 3x and 8 of this plus 15 of this is going to give me 23 of this. 23 times the square root of 3x. That's the answer. Okay, the next one is a, one of these that involves a fraction under the radical, which is a little bit tricky, but I'll talk you through this. The square root of 5 minus the square root of 1 fifth. Okay, I'm going to deal with this fraction under the radical first. So I'm going to leave this square root of 5 here and rewrite the problem as the square root of 5 minus the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. This just gets broken up into two separate radicals like that. And then I can multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. That's perfectly legal. 
to multiply by a fraction here that's equal to 1. And then when I combine the numerators there, that will just give me a square root of 5 on the top, and that will give me a 5 on the bottom, because the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 will just be 5. So now let's rewrite this whole problem as the square root of 5 minus the square root of 5 over 5. And these two terms right here, this and this, can be combined into a single term by rewriting them with the same denominator. So I'm going to take this first term, square root of 5, and write it as 5 times the square root of 5 over 5. And then keep this second term the same. So it's minus the square root of 5 over 5. And what I wrote here is exactly the same as what I have here. I've just added this 5 on the top and the bottom. And I'm not trying to cancel those out. I added those deliberately so that these would have the same denominator. And those can now be written as a single fraction. I can say 5 root 5 minus the square root of 5 over 5. And as we've seen before, this is easier to think about if you look at this square root of 5 right here and think of it as 1 times the square root of 5. And then you can see 5 root 5 minus 1 root 5 is going to give me a numerator of 4 root 5. And the denominator is still, uh, still a 5. So that's my answer, 4 root 5 over 5.